they're really targeted for those particular neighborhoods. It doesn't prohibit anybody from going there, but uh, ideally it's, it's families that can, you know, can bike and, and walk uh, to those parks. And if this is successful, you know, maybe we'll branch out into other uh, parts of the community next uh, summer. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, I, on behalf of the board, I want to thank staff for, because I know this is a hard decision to make, and I know this was not an easy decision, but I mean, from the information provided, I feel it's the right decision, so I do want to thank you. Uh, okay, so we're moving on to IMB proposed district reorg plan. I give you a lot of information, yeah, you did. and I, I'm going to try to summarize it in, in as short as I can. As my wife said, you're going to do it in five minutes or Larry five minutes, which is usually like ten minutes. Uh, I'll, I'll make it quick as I can. One of the things I, I, I try to do like, when you hired me was to uh, spend some time talking to staff. Um, we got a wealth of knowledge here. We have Terry who's been here forever, um, and Scott's been here for quite a long time. Our maintenance crews, we have some have been here 30 plus years. And so I made a point that I was going to sit down with every one of the staff members and try to find out what's working, what's not working, what would you change if you could change it, uh, what, you know, just trying to get, a, 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 get up to speed as quick as I can. Then I try to use the rest of the 10 plus months I've been here uh, to watch what is done, how it's done, who does it, and try, again, you know, I, I, I probably overuse the phrase, but I, I'm really about efficiency and, and being effective at what we do, and, and again, trying to find out, you know, how we can provide good product for the, the not, I don't call it best price, uh, you know, good service for a fair price. And so in looking at things, one of the things, I'll start with the maintenance side. We were predominantly heavy with part-time. We had three full-time employees. And, and, and at the time, budget-wise, we actually had room, we had uh, budget six positions. Or excuse me, uh, five positions. Three um, in uh, what we call 30-day, 38-hour-week positions, and then two seasonal positions. One of the seasonal positions was, uh, became vacant the day before I started and then one became vacant uh, last fall. And then we had a, one of the 38 hour positions become vacant last summer. And my whole intent was, uh, my staff, certain staff wanted to fill those positions immediately because they felt if you had them, you, and they were vacant, you needed to fill them. I wanted to see what was not gonna get done if we didn't fill them. And so I didn't intentionally hold back uh, so they could suffer. But I wanted to see, I wanted to, them to demonstrate where the need was going to be. And the other part of the, uh, the equation was I also wanted to see how they were performing their tasks. And I saw a lot of redundancy. Uh, and I'll just give you an example. I would pull up in the morning, park my truck, uh, two uh, park trucks would show up, and three guys would get out with the little paper grabbers. And I thought three, two vehicles, three people to pick up, Whatever needs to be picked, and I started seeing that some of that was uh, was in other aspects of our maintenance operations, and I think a lot of it's just because that's the way they don't always done it. Uh, and, and and I don't know if anyone has said, well, let's try to do something different. So I, I, I was looking at maintenance about how what are the core things that we do? What are the primary things that we're responsible for? I'll call it mow, blow, and go. We we want to mow our parks, we want to blow our sidewalks off, and we need to get out going to the next project. So I had a chance to spend a lot of time in maintenance over the last, since I've been here. On the recreation side, I realized the biggest drawback and, and, and obstacle we had is we didn't have enough, enough bodies. And at one time, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, we had two recreation supervisors and a, rec and a recreation superintendent. And then one of the things I heard from the board was that, gee, you'd like to see an expansion of programs. Well, it takes people to do that. And so when I started looking at these things, and, and I got to tell you, Terry was a wealth of knowledge because she's a, she's a great history bank. She she if if I if someone doesn't know, Terry knows it. So she was help help me fill in the blanks for a lot of the questions I had. The bottom line, I wanted to take a step back and say, how do we use the existing resources and not 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 put more debt to our district, but how do we use what we have and maybe move some some people around, some responsibilities around, and try to put the people where we need them most, and, 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 and also at the same time, give people an opportunity to, to grow into new positions, and, and, I, and, I, and I feel very strongly about this too. 
it was tough for me to have a, see a 38 hour work person a week person work next to a full time person doing exactly the same thing that they're doing, and they're not they're not the compensation is not even on par. Uh, it's hard for me to explain to, to someone you know why you get this and that person gets that, but you do exactly the same thing. Which made me also realize too that we need to define a little bit about the roles of the uh, and the maintenance staff of who does what and so forth and so on. So taking a step back, looking at all these types of things, I, I and realized that we had some. Um, we had some opportunities here that, that we should really take advantage of. I'm sure you guys are aware that for a number of years now, we've used a company to provide a cleaning service for our building. That's at the cost of one full-time employee. And when I looked at what the, we actually, what that person does, we have the benefit of cameras in our main office. So we, had to, we can know sometimes what people do at nighttime when we're not here. And I'm not saying we're not getting good service, but I also realized I don't know where there's four hours worth of work that needs to be done every night. And also looking about you know how we have to pay more when a group gets out late, somebody has to stay later and clean up after them and set up tables and chairs for the group in the morning, thinking, well, why couldn't our people come in the morning and do this, especially since we saved hours with the uh, setup program. We saved 10 hours there when we got out of having to provide maintenance for that in the morning. And then we saved 20 hours of, of a week for half of a year by having our maintenance guy have to go and operate a pool for the school district. So when we put all these pieces together, I looked at how I thought we could uh, we could move some people around, move some responsibilities around, and in doing so, not just to move people around but just because, hey, it's a neat thing to do, but because it made sense and it positioned the district in a way so we can do more now and more in the future at no additional uh, financial obligation to the district. As you see from that financial page that I put in there, uh, those are real numbers. And it, it, it's not a coincidence, it just worked out that way. I guess it is a coincidence. That, the, you know, that by making all these moves, it, it pays for itself. It, it, it's a wash. Uh, so that's it in a nutshell. I, I'm assuming there's probably lots of questions on this because it's a little, a little different. Uh, I have informed, obviously, so we have a staff report. It's a public document. I have met with staff and told them what we're doing so no one wakes up tomorrow has a big surprise that Larry's trying to do something different. Uh, and, and, and again, a lot of these things that, that, that motivated some of the change actually came from the employees themselves, and what they think would work better. So I, I guess it was like a five and a half to seven and a half kind of minute presentation. <laughs> well, I thought maybe Mike was looking at his watch all the time. Nope. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for Larry? Okay. Add nothing. Can I report from the committee's perspective? Absolutely. Um, sitting on the committee, um, we heard Larry's presentation and, and we realized as a committee, and I think we realized as a, as an, as a board, that when Kay retired, Chuck came on in an interim role. And Chuck really just kind of maintained the status quo of the district and positions weren't being filled, just holding that status quo because of our financial status. And when we set out our, our proposal for a new, um, a new district administrator, we were really looking for somebody to come in and do just what Larry has done, this analysis of where we were at that time, where we were with staffing, what our staff looked like as far as their potential, and, and certainly where we needed to be moving forward. And I think Larry has, has, has certainly, his time served here, has done that due diligence. And what I respect the most about the process was that he included staff in these conversations. It wasn't just Larry from a mountaintop saying this is the way it's going to be. He included staff in these conversations to get their perspective of, of their jobs and their potential and, and how they wanted to see the district move forward as well. And, and really came back with a very thorough analysis and, and, and a game plan moving forward. Um, when, the, when the proposal went out to hire a new district administrator, I think we would have loved to have hired within. I think we've got some qualified staff here that, that, that certainly serve the potential needs of the district. But our, our current staff just wasn't quite well-rounded enough in all areas of the district to assume the, the district administrator's position. And I think this plan here 
gives our staff the ability to become more well-rounded in the overall running of different aspects of the park district. So when other advancement opportunities come in the future, whether it's within this district or another district, they now have a basis of well-rounded experience, both in the recreation, the maintenance, the park, suit, the parks division, to, to advance their career moving forward. So I think that, that I think Larry also did another job. So that's a, a, a true benefit, I think, to the, to the staff moving forward is career advancement potential. But I think Larry also was very conscious about how we were going to pay for it and really looked at the vacant positions and moving the janitorial service in-house. And, and uh, like Terry mentioned, the SETA program, uh, janitorial service went away and staffing the pool went away as well. And he really found areas to make this work fiscally for the district. So I commend Larry on his, uh, on his thoughtful analysis, including staff in the conversation and really finding a way to make this work financially for the district. I would, uh, I would definitely recommend a yes vote on this proposal. I should point out one thing I, I neglected to mention is that uh, these proposed changes would be going in effect uh, with, with one exception, July 1st. Now obviously, uh, I, it's not like July 1st is a magic date that we all sit and say, okay, tomorrow we start planning all these things. The effort of uh, transitioning will begin immediately. We have to do that because we have a budget that we have to prepare. And I want to work with, with Mark and Scott on both sides uh, because each one will be looking at the budget differently than they looked at it before. And so I want to spend quality time with them and help them along the process of it as we go to develop the budget. But the one area that, that I, I'm asking, and I know it's a, uh, it's a policy the decision of the board, is to create new positions. And part of the recommendation is to immediately fill a recreation coordinator position. A recreation coordinator, the difference between that and a supervisor is the coordinator usually is an entry level position. Um, and I think for our district that's, that's, that's very doable. Getting somebody, we, we can train and we can mold and bring somebody in. Uh, and I'm, I'm thinking that somebody probably relatively new out of college and has a little bit of experience that we can bring in and kind of uh, you know, mold the way that we think will work best for our district. But the reason we need to fill that position immediately is, I, 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 Mark in particular has just had been hamstrung because we had a part-time coordinator and uh, that person didn't work out and, and we've avoided filling it until we knew exactly what this reorganization plan was going to look like, particularly how it affected recreation. Uh, we need to fill it now because we need someone to help the planning for summer and be able to hit the, 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 you know, the the ground running so when summer starts we're not just bringing a person on where they're already got a few months behind them and, 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 and they can get actual program assignments the other piece too that's a little bit different is and I as I explained to to uh, Mark uh, uh, Mark's gonna have program responsibilities we're you know he's, he's gonna be out there running programs as well uh, and I hope someday that we can add back a supervisor or another position so we can you know transition him a little bit out of that but that's kind of where our needs are and, and, with, and with Scott, you know, I, I, and I give Scott a tremendous amount of credit when I brought up the idea of uh, moving over to maintenance. You know, sometimes when you do something for a long time, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, you know, the, a change can be diff difficult sometimes. He was ready to jump right in, let's go. And I appreciate that so much. And, and uh, because while well, you hired me to kind of, I, and I don't know if I ever told you this, I didn't know that, that, that uh, uh, Chuck had retired until the morning I showed up. And I asked Terry, I said, could I, could I like to meet with the superintendents of parks and, and, and recreation both? And she says, well, he retired last Friday. <laughs> and, and the reason I say that is, is that, you know, there's, on the maintenance side, as you know, that's where the bulk of the staff are. But the day-to-day, -day, if, you, if you know anything about park maintenance, that day-to-day -day stuff changes constantly. The things that we were talking today about locks on doors and, and, and where people are stealing our, our, our bases out of our, uh, that connect to the concrete from our, our picnic tables. And, and the time we had to spend to look at how we have to get the right type of screws to make them uh, theft proof, which is, doesn't exist. But 